This is Ken with VOD TV at the IP Possibilities 2011 conference with Rob Reardon. Rob, uh, you just spoke, but you also have come up with an interesting concept of, uh, of how to use femtocells. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, as a landline carrier, one of the things we face is we have to somehow get uh, data or get get connections into the home. And of course, the way we've done it always is by the copper into the house. Uh, came up with this wonderful concept of putting fiber into the house. Well, that's not that cheap. As a matter of fact, for me to do it for my entire company would cost as much as the company's worth. So it doesn't pay. So then you look at it and say, well, we can do DSAs, which puts digital serving areas a little closer to the home. That gives us a little more bandwidth over that copper. And that's a possibility, too. But quite frankly, the cellular carriers are coming right over my shoulder on that. So my thought is there's a technology called the fem to cell uh, Pico cells and fem to cells And what they are is a low-cost alternative to a cell site using cellular frequencies, any of the ones that are out there, the 700, the 800, the um, AWS or PCS uh, type spectrum, and you could take and put that out at the pedestal down the road, a couple of miles away, because femtocells can be traveling if you get the right kind of femtocell, and have that as your backhaul from your house to that cell site. So now I'm using the airwaves for that last mile to my house. So a couple of questions that come to mind on that. Um, one of the things is power. You know, how do you power these devices? Uh, how do you get the signal to them and back and forth? Power is, is certainly is an issue on that. And you do, that's where your copper's got to come into play on it. They've got to be a low power type drain, and that's going to limit how far the fem to cell can throw. But you can do it on a fairly low power. Think about how much power your cellular phone uses. And a cellular phone does transmit signal. Mm -hmm. So it's using on a very low power. You can do the same thing powering over the line. If you're trying to get more juice over it, that might be more of an issue. But again, it depends on how far you're trying to throw it. And I assume it'd be battery backed up, centrally uh, located type of uh, power backup. Just like your telephone company is, because you're still bringing, you're still going copper out to that pedestal. And so you're going to have that's where your power's got to come from. Now, can you find these things in hardened uh, versions so that you can put them in the outdoor pedestals? You can't even find them. No, I'm, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. <laughs> because they're Pico cells, right? Yeah. The, uh, no, no, no. The reality is they're just <laughs> in the so early, early stages yeah. of it. So far, the only ones they've developed at this point are ones that are on the cable networks. Uh, and uh, uh, was it Pico Cell is one of the companies that's come up with it. Uh, there's another company out of Canada, which for some reason, why? Um, Whitetail, I believe. I can't think of the name of them. But they have it on CDMA. And they're using that technology but then they're able to power it over the cable TV line. So that's where the RF comes back in that case. Those are available today. The ones I'm talking about don't exist yet, but we're in the early stages. All we need to do is have somebody come up and say, yes, something I'd like to do, and the developers will come up and create the devices for it. And it makes a lot of sense. I think there is an important message there, too, that you still need that bandwidth along, along that backbone. So in some ways, fiber or some kind of multi-bonded uh, DSL, I'd assume. Absolutely. I mean, you're going to have to have the bandwidth. There's no question about that on the backbone. But the idea is, is that it, five thousand dollars to take that plow, put it in the ground, and drive it to the house, and the the cable, and then also have to do the maintenance on it, just doesn't make sense if you can do it a lot more economically. Yes, yeah, so you're not digging up uh, sidewalks or anything, or a lot less. So uh, the question, though, is okay. So uh, it's I love the concept, but what if I'm an operator and I don't have the spectrum? Well, there's a couple of things that can happen on that. One of them first is you can look to see if you can partner with somebody. I mean, if there's a, a cellular carrier in the area, you might be able to partner with them to work on it. But the other thing that's coming is white spaces. Um, the FCC has, in their infinite wisdom, come up and said that the TV channels can be reused and the white spaces. So in other words, if I have channel 36 and channel 37 are not used in my area, there's a, um, a piece you have to go through to do it and there's gear that's coming out, but you wouldn't even have to license it yourself. The manufacturer puts it together. It's lower power, uh, but with that you'd be able to do that last bit of link. And that has some real interesting possibilities to it. Yeah, and we uh, actually at NAB we have a video interview of a company that is doing that and it was very impressive and he kind of likened it to Wi-Fi. I guess the big question on that is, uh, you know, the public, uh, the air is a public good. Uh, will it remain unlicensed? Are there challenges there as far as, you know, working with the FCC? Uh, wh what should be done there? You did say FCC. Yeah, there's always a challenge. You're never quite sure where they're going to go with it, what, what the priorities of the particular uh, administration is that's, that's driving it, the particular uh, chairman of the FCC. They change, so the priorities change on a regular basis. And uh, 
that, that has a concern. So you want to make sure if you're going to do this, you're not going to spend a ton of money on it. But the technology is there. It's, it's on the early stages of it. Within a couple of years, it'll be fully developed and out there. They do have some very tight rules with it. So mm -hmm. the, the collar on the, on the spectrum has to sure. be very tight, which means the radios, it's not like Wi-Fi in that sense, because Wi-Fi is kind of sloppy. I mean, mm -hmm. it overlaps. If you think about it in a, in a Wi-Fi scenario, if I've got a channel and I'm using channel six, channel five and channel uh, seven don't work uh, in the area. So you've got a problem with this, that one band of spectrum is available. And if you use the one next to it, that's fine. It isn't going to interfere with it. It also only travels a certain amount of distance on it, so it can be much more controlled. And I think it's got a lot more legs to it. Well, it also seems very uh, well suited for rural areas where there aren't a lot of broadcast channels out there, as you know today. Absolutely. Um, so the question is, uh, you know, as an industry, there hasn't been a lot of talk about white spaces. Uh, should that be more of a topic of a conversation, and especially keeping it unlicensed? Well, yeah, it definitely should. I mean, there's no question that if you want to play in the game. Um, the, the, the one drawback you have is you don't have spectrum, and this gives you that opportunity. Now, remember that not only can you do it as a, as a landline carrier and you, you mm -hmm. offer it, uh, so can Joe Doak's barn door and screen company down okay. the road because okay. it's, it's unlicensed and the radio is licensed, but the person carrying sure. it isn't. But we have strengths as landline phone companies. We, are, we, we have, already have the infrastructure in place. We already have the uh, backhaul in place. They don't have that. Um, you know, Joe Doak's barn door doesn't have that. Right. We've got the capability. So we can take advantage of that and we can offer the service. And that we have to capitalize on what strengths we do have. And we do have them. We're just afraid to use them. I, I think you're right, Rob. Well, Rob, I'm so glad we ran into each other. And uh, Good to see you again, you. Ken. Yep. Take care.